Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is a part two of answering all of the questions you guys submitted. And I'm honestly really enjoying this format. It's really fun to see what you guys aren't sure about or like what you want my opinion on. Um, kind of feels like more of a two-way street than me just coming up with a random subject and you guys enjoying it or not. So yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, first question. When I donate a piece of clothing, how often does it actually get a second life? So if you're not familiar, waste colonialism is a whole big issue in fashion that I've spoken about a little before, I think. When we donate clothing in the global north, we often think it's going to stay in that charity store we've sent it to and get used by someone else in this country. That's often not the case. Something like 70% of the cast offs here in the UK get sent overseas to the global south who have to receive our discarded clothing and deal with it we kind of outsource that responsibility onto them and it's something that lot, not a lot of consumers are aware of but our governments are deeply entrenched in this issue when they get to those global south countries like ghana for instance is inundated with our secondhand clothing the vast majority of it gets sent straight to landfill where it just rots away producing methane, producing toxic chemicals that run off into the water. It's really harmful for the communities there. I found this figure that says 15 million items of old clothing are shipped just to Ghana. Just to Ghana. That's one destination out of the many in the world that we send our old clothing to. Donating clothing is definitely not as sustainable as you might think. And there's a couple of other ways you should give your clothes a second life, which I've detailed in a couple of different videos. Okay, what should I do with the items of clothing that are at the end of their lives? Is H&M recycling program good or is it just my marketing? Similar question below, how do you sustainably dispose of clothing, e.g. underwear with holes or items that are actually too worn to continue to be used? Okay, let's break this down. One of the things in that question was, is H&M recycling actually good or is it just marketing? It's definitely just marketing. The whole scheme of fast fashion companies collecting your clothing is really, really sus. I think there's been a couple of investigations, at least one, into specifically H&M's recycling that proved that they didn't go to any recycling centers. They ended up going to like multiple locations before they ended up in a landfill somewhere um, in the global south. So they just became part of the waste colonialism trade. So don't see H&M recycling as a way to sustainably get rid of your clothing. The second part of this question I feel is what to do with clothes that you can't pass on to someone else to wear. It really depends on the item. So if you've got something that's like natural fibers that seems to be beyond repair, like a t-shirt, I guess, you can cut that up and use it as rags in your home or you know any other kind of project where you need some material, like say for painting or whatever. Um, it's always good to have some spare rags around in case something spills or in case just to protect the flooring or whatever. Get a bit creative of what you can do there. Um, when it comes to items that you really can't see a like secondhand life for at all and you know it needs to be donated, what I do is search up that specific item recycling in my local area. So like if it is underwear, I'll search recycling underwear and just see what comes up. I know there's actually a couple of companies that do try to collect underwear for various reasons, which is really good. And your local government should offer some kind of recycling scheme where they properly dispose of this waste one way or another. These official programs should at least have some accountability versus H&M. You know, no one is watching them. They can do whatever they like with that clothing. When a care tag states that it's made from 100% recyclable material, is it actually made from recyclable materials? This is sneaky. There's like a whole marketing ploy sometimes going on here where something might say, made from 100% recycled materials on the hang tag and companies are talking about the hang tag itself rather than the clothes it's connected to. So you do kind of have to be a little bit more involved in the process to actually check what you're buying. Um, normally it's 
kind of simple you just need to check the little tag that's often at the bottom of clothing that's actually sewn into it you know the kind here this one <laughs> um and that should have a breakdown of materials on it it should also give you washing instructions and stuff um and that should be a lot more accurate than trusting a hang tag is it actually more sustainable making your own clothes on a small slow scale obviously yes but i see a lot of influencers seemingly making new clothes all the time i think it really depends i if they're making something handmade even for a specific occasion but they're then selling it on on depop or whatever to someone else and that person can then have a handmade item in their wardrobe then I think it's okay. But obviously if they're creating something, even hand creating something for one occasion only and then not wearing it again and throwing it out, that's not sustainable. That's that's never gonna be sustainable because it's just throwaway culture still. Okay, I got two questions which are quite long. So I'm gonna pop them on the screen. Um, but basically what they're talking about is what to do if you desperately need something like a suit from an interview but the charity store doesn't stock it or the charity store is too expensive or they don't have size inclusive items. Actually one of my subscribers replied to this and they did really well with you know explaining everything so I'll pop their reply on the screen too um, but my thoughts on this is Overconsumption is always at the root of the issue. I feel like we've almost got too deep in our heads when it comes to individual purchases, when we should really be looking at consumption as a whole. I mean, talking about individual times where you need something and you can't get it anywhere else, of course it's okay to buy it from fast fashion if that's what you can afford. It's about how you care for that clothing, how long you keep it in your wardrobe, like that subscriber said. It's obviously really hard, but we need to be looking at our clothing consumption as a whole and really addressing those times when we're buying something we don't need or we think we need we've convinced ourselves we need but we actually don't it's about you know finding those purchases and stopping those purchases versus purchases where we actually need something like you actually need a suit for an interview to get the job um then it kind of trumps sustainability in a way yeah sometimes i think we get a bit too entrenched in these conversations and we forget the big picture all right as an autistic person it's okay to make less sustainable choices for example if i specifically can only tolerate certain types of clothing and can't find it thrifted they've given a little example here but it's definitely okay for you to prioritize your comfort over buying something in a sustainable material. Again, it's kind of all about seeing the bigger picture, all about evaluating your overconsumption habits. And if you don't buy a lot of clothes, but you have to buy specific clothes when you do, that's absolutely fine. It's more unsustainable to buy something in a better fabric like organic cotton but because you don't like that, the feeling of that on your skin, you don't wear it and it just hangs in your wardrobe. I think it just needs to be, you know, a personal decision of you deciding whether something is sustainable or not based on your needs. Okay, it might be a dumb question at this point, but I'm still super unclear on which materials are the most and least ideal in terms of sustainability. I know reclaimed recycled polyester is better than virgin poly, but otherwise I feel like I've heard conflicting bits on materials. There's no dumb questions. Everyone feels this way because so often the narrative of what material is sustainable or not is controlled by brands and they are controlling it to try get you to buy. So for example, the whole leather versus vegan leather debate that we have so often on this channel Brands started by marketing real leather as a byproduct of the meat industry in order to get you to feel better about wearing animal skin, I guess. And while it's true that leather is a product that comes along with meat, it's not really a byproduct considering how lucrative the industry is and how leather often gets farmers more money than meat. So yeah you had that whole debate with brands pushing leather as a byproduct so people felt better you then have the recent debate of brands marketing polyester leather as vegan and therefore better for the environment and also better for people who don't want to wear animal skin but 
that leather is plastic <laughs> and plastic is really bad for the environment. I mean, we can't keep drilling oil all the time, but brands want to sell it to you because it's cheaper than buying real leather and cheaper than buying biomaterials. So it's, I completely understand why people are confused. I get confused all the time. It's literally dependent on what brands are marketing at the time, the public opinion. So I have some tips, but I do also have some bad news, which is that every material has its pros and cons, even like organic cotton, which is held as like maybe the most sustainable material in the general public's eyes, at least right now. Organic cotton is obviously better than normal cotton in terms of pesticide use, but it's also very water intensive, just like regular cotton, and it takes up a lot of land which could be used for human crops. So it's got pros and cons. Every material has pros and cons, even the natural materials that we often get told are sustainable, like linen, flax, hemp, silk, wool. They all have pros and cons. Are they still better than polyester? Yes, they are. I mean, anything has to be better than drilling oil out of our planet to turn it into throwaway fashion. But are natural materials completely sustainable? No. This is how I personally try to get around this whole nuanced debate. I limit my polyester purchases as much as possible, even recycled polyester, um, because it's not great for your skin anyway. And I don't want to encourage the use of polyester from brands, even though you know they're recycling what's there. I don't want to create more and more of demand, just personally. Sometimes we need polyester, but I try to avoid it. I buy natural materials as much as possible, and I pay attention to the concentration of these materials in an item. So I try to buy stuff that has a large percentage of one raw material like say something that's 100% organic cotton or like even 80% organic cotton and 20% regular or whatever. Because I'm thinking down the line, if I choose to recycle this item, it's a lot easier for it to be recycled if it's 100% of a fabric versus a blend that then has to be separated before it can be recycled. I shop secondhand as much as possible because then it doesn't really matter what material you're shopping because it's already been created and you're not creating a demand for more virgin materials. So yeah, I often think if you're shopping secondhand in moderation, that's the most sustainable thing. You don't really have to worry about much else. Um, it just comes down to personal preference at that point. Yeah, I guess those are my top tips. That's what I try to like tick off every time I buy something. Okay, last one. Is it possible to buy sustainable swimwear and activewear? Aren't they all made out of polyester? I would say it's possible to buy more sustainable stuff. So like, for example, I just said, no material is perfect. No material is 100% sustainable that I know of yet, but there are materials that are more sustainable. So for activewear, for example, such a high percentage of that is made from polyester right now because it's cheap and it's durable and it's sweat wicking, which is what most people want from activewear. I mean, you can buy activewear made from natural materials, which often has a couple of these principles that you want. Like say wool, for example, is really sweat wicking. So if you're going hiking in the mountains, you wanna wear something that's wool because uh, it will keep you temperature regulated and dry. So maybe it depends on exactly what you want that active wear for. You could look into natural materials that have the properties you're looking for. I think cotton is actually sweat wicking to an extent. And I think linen does keep you really cool in the summer, for example. So those two might be good for active wear if you're you know, doing something that's a bit hotter than hiking in the mountains. When it comes to swimwear, it's a little bit harder, I think. I don't know if any other brand is creating swimwear that's not polyester in some form. I think you actually can get tensile swimwear. So I'll look, up, I'll look that up and if it's true, I'll put it on the screen. But what you definitely can do and what more brands are offering is buy recycled polyester which like I said, is, is not the best option. Polyester is polyester. We obviously have created a certain amount of it and recycling it is a good thing, but we don't want to encourage more polyester creation so brands can capitalize on that. But 
For the current climate where there's not many alternatives, buying recycled polyester is a good option to be more sustainable. If anyone has any brand recommendations for this of swimmer brands that are actually, you know, putting out something more sustainable, then drop them below because that could be really helpful. But yeah, I think that's all the questions from you guys. I'm really sorry if I missed any. I did try to be really careful, um, but drop them below and I can reply in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you really soon. Bye.